Welcome to the Learn French with Alexa podcast, where we present a French word, look at where it comes from, and take a deep dive into the language and culture that surrounds it. Now hold on to your berets and anything they happen to be sitting on, because this episode is all about the guillotine. Funny, Adam, hold on to your beret. <laughs> anyway, um, so to be clear, today we are talking about the word guillotine and not guillotine, the way you said that. Did I say it incorrectly? Yeah, and uh, that's... Um, so you, what you've got to understand about French words, if there is I double L, the sound is a Y sound. Yeah. So guillotine is the way we pronounce that word. Mm -hmm. Guillotine. Yeah. yeah. How do you spell it? Let's just spell it for the benefit of so those. So in French, G-U-I-L-O-T-I-N-E and in English, G-U-I-L-L-O-T-I-N-E. Guillotine. Guillotine. Absolutely. So imagine that the I double L is a Y yeah. sound. Guillotine. It sounds very French, but um, is it French. Well, we have today our, uh, one of our content creators at Learn French with Alexa, Benedict, and Adam, of course, he's the CEO of Learn French with Alexa. <laughs> I'm not sure whether you want to be referred to as a... You can refer to me as the CEO. I've never been referred to that before, but I'm happy with that. Anyway, so uh, Adam is asking Benedict, is the guillotine French, is the word? So if we were talking about the machine, right? Mm. And the machine, sorry to say, is not French. Um, actually, you've got traces of it um, all the way back to the um, 16th century on engravings. We think it started in, with the Germans, then it was the Scots uh, with the Maiden, um, the Italian as well. There's even traces of it in France, like almost a, um, a century before, um, you know, it was properly introduced as the guillotine. So, no, the machine itself is not French. But we, uh, you know, the world knows of the guillotine. Um, so how did that come to pass? Mm, yes, that's interesting uh, because we don't know the word for that machine in Scotland. But no. everybody is going to know what a guillotine is throughout the world, uh, I'm assuming. So basically, it, it's, a, it's an idea that came from a good place. The doctor who... <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it did. Um, so it's a doctor who's called Guillotin who proposed in 1789 a machine to carry out the death penalty in order to make it a bit more fair, fairer to everyone and also less painful, more human. More so for humane. everybody yeah. to have the same death. Yes, basically. because at the time, um, if you were rich, you, you were getting the nice execution, I guess, right. uh, where you, get your, you would get your head chopped off um, Quickly or not, depending <laughs> of, of uh, you know, if the blade was sharp enough. This is happening during the French Revolution. Just the before time. that, yeah, just this before sort of that. period, around um, 1780s, 1790s. And at the time, however, if you were a peasant, uh, you would either get burnt at the stake oh, yeah. or like broken on the wheel, which oh. is basically being... Um, I'm not even sure how you pronounce it. But it sounds blitched. very gruesome. Yeah, you will literally, like, every bones on your body would be broken by the end of it. Um, so, yeah, not very fair. Not very fair. So to avoid, um, <laughs> to avoid that, he, you know, proposed that we use a machine and that machine became the guillotine later on. Actually, it was almost called the Louisette, la Louisette, <laughs> because they uh, gave um, the project, I, I guess you, call, you could say the that. The project, yeah. The project was, was given to uh, another doctor who was called Louis. And uh. so they thought it was going to be la Louisette. It was not, and it's, Based on the Scottish version. And that one was called The Maiden. The Maiden, yeah. The Maiden, like the Scottish yeah. one. He didn't do anything else to it. Like he didn't right. add anything to it. So he didn't the, 
you know, make it better or anything. It's just, it's the same design. Design. So uh, that's interesting that it became la guillotine. So why do you think that la louisette or la guillotine is feminine? That's a good question. Actually. Are we referring to... I think it's la machine. La machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is why the guillotin is, you know, uh, here, you know, that's his name. And we can assume it's a masculine name. Um, add an E to it and then it becomes a feminine word. Oh, right. Machines in yeah, French are feminine. feminine. Yeah. Machine. Oh, so uh, what kind of names do you do you have for the guillotine? Is it always just la guillotine or do you, are there any nicknames? Um, we had the red widow, la veuve rouge. We also had... La uh, veuve rouge. Yeah. So widow in French is veuve. Veuve, yeah. V-E-U-V-E. V -E. V -E, yeah. Okay, la veuve rouge. Um, la lucarne. La lucarne. Which would be the skyline. The skyline. So yeah. lucarne would be L-U-C-A-R-N. E? And that means skylight. The skylight, yeah. I guess if like you think about it, it's a little window. Like the window you have above your head in a, in a house. Yeah. yeah, but I think it refers to the hole, maybe, of uh, where you put your head into. Yeah, I think it looks like a lucarne. It, it, yeah, it looks like I'm, a little I'm not hole. Sure. I'm just, you know, uh, putting it out there. That could be the, the why, uh, why of yeah. the word lucarne. We also had le bois de justice, which is literally the wood of, of justice. justice. La bois de le, justice. Le, le, le bois. Le bois, mm -hmm. pardon me, le bois, the wood of justice. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Le rasoir national is oh, one wow. of my favorite ones, <laughs> I have to say. Rasoir national is perfect. It is the national razor. The national razor. <laughs> For a close shave, choose the national razor. <laughs> Le rasoir national. It's terrible, but I love it. And I think you like that one, Adam. Le moulin. A silence. Oh, I heard this one. Yeah, I like this one. It's quite poetic. Mm -hmm. Le moulin, mm -hmm. which means windmill. A silence of silence. silence. The windmill yeah. of silence. Yeah, and coming back to Guillotin, it's actually kind of a tragedy when you think about it because he was against death, the death penalty. Um, so he was trying to make it, you know, into good thing if you can call it that and he was devastated when he learned later on that you know his project was actually quite painful um and that some people would survive for a couple of minutes after yeah. and then to the extent that his family tried to get the machine renamed and then the mm -hmm. government said no and then um, basically what happened is they changed their own name. Yeah, uh. I was going to say, imagine bearing the name of something that is so lethal um, that that's painful for anybody. At school, we, uh, we, uh, I remember learning about the reign of terror mm. during the French Revolution. And I yeah. think it was used hundreds of times. Yeah. Um, no, thousands, no, of thousands times. actually, yeah. thousands thousands thousands. Yeah, ten, around ten thousand. We, didn't we see somewhere seventeen thousand? Yeah, seventeen thousand people died. I'm not sure it, if they were all, all ex executed. executed with the guillotine. Okay, uh, around two thousand people died in Paris. I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, it it was used. Yeah, it Did, was. It became a bit of a spectacle. Oh, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, to the extent that people would come with their families, like watching, um, watching it like a like a show. At school, I remember uh, learning about the knitting women of the guillotine. There were supposed, supposedly revo revolutionary women uh, who were sitting near the execution site and just knitting away while people were getting their head chopped. And I think Alexa uh, told me about how. Children. Yes, it was a very popular toy, uh, a mini version of the guillotine that uh, was a toy that uh, kids used to play with. Um, it was eventually banned. Oh, I, was <laughs> I think. do wonder why. <laughs> so, because the kids, it was two foot tall, uh, which is about 30 centimeters high, I think, or, or so. Um, and it was in a working order, um, so much so that the kids could actually use mouse rodents uh, to see whether the machine could decapitate uh, and their dogs and as well. And it could. <laughs> it could. And so it, it became something that uh, was eventually uh, well banned uh, them because of fear that they were a vicious influence. <laughs> I mean, just to bring a child to an execution, you know, to, to, to watch the spectacle sounds so traumatic to me. When so. I was a child, I had a 
toy guillotine. No, you didn't. Uh, well, let me explain. I used to be oh, yeah. into magic tricks as a oh, child. Ah. <laughs> and I had a, like a, a, a magic trick where you would put your finger in and it would look like it was going to chop your finger oh, off. Right. But it was a fake, fake <laughs> guillotine. Right. And so yeah. you could do tricks. Also, there was one where you would put a cigarette into it and chop it up. Yes, that's right. That's right. You, you saw that in a desk. Yes. Didn't you, for the cigar, to, to, yes. to chop the, the, mm. the tip of the, the cigar? Uh, can I just tell you a funny anecdote about a friend of mine? This episode is sponsored by all of us here at Learn French with Alexa. Well, it's that time of year again where hearts begin to flutter. May we, Valentine's Day is almost upon us, so it's the perfect time to share the language of love with that special someone. And to help you along the avenues of Amour, we're offering a 20% discount at learnfrenchwithalexa.com. Ooh la la, I hear you say. Hurry though, the sale ends when the clock strikes midnight on the 16th of February 2022. Visit learnfrenchwithalexa.com slash love for the coupon code and the full terms and conditions. That's it. Back to the podcast. She got married, she's English, but got married in France because her husband is French in the southern village somewhere. And uh, they were uh, putting together the menu of the wedding or whatever, and she really needed a guillotine. And of course, in England here, uh, we use the word guillotine for this machine that cuts papers, you know. And uh, she went around, you know, with a broken French asking for a guillotine and even went up to the mayor of the village asking for a guillotine. <laughs> and apparently the poor mayor looked at her as if, you know, she was asking him, do we have the head cutting machine? So, of course, there was a, you know, lost in translation here. She was after a guillotine to cut her invitation, wedding invitation up, you know. And the mayor thought that she was asking, and of course thought she was mad, asking she was for the English executioner, <laughs> asking arrived. for the actually where is the guillotine in the village? Coming back to the revolution, I think the youngest girl who was, I think it's a girl, um, who was executioned was fourteen. Oh wow! And the oldest person was um, ninety-two. Oh wow! Um, so you Why? know. Quite a range of uh, a whole ages. Range. Um, yeah, it's like Louis the Sixteenth. It was the sorry goes that it was his idea that the blade would look in French would say biseauté, so beveled, um, so that you know it would cut better and quicker, I guess. Um, and then he obviously experienced it firsthand. Indeed, um, because he was later um, beheaded. Mm. The story also says that. When he was beheaded, uh, he didn't die right away. And then mm. uh, they had to do it twice. So maybe it oh. wasn't working that well. Wow. And that was 1793, was yes. it? 1793. In January. In January. Marie Antoinette. Was it a year later? That a year, year later, later. Almost a year later. She was um, executed in um, October of the same year. And the poor lady um, stepped on... Um, executioner's foot and she said sorry before she being said, killed. She said, pardonnez-moi. Yes. Pardon, and, and does it mean that he felt really bad or uh, the executioner? We don't know that. I'm we sure he did. The executioner sure is, what's the f word for executioner? So in French it would be le bourreau. Le bourreau. Le bourreau. How do you spell that? B O U double R E A U. So, so the sound O is often A U or E A U. So the bourreau. Interestingly enough, uh, the word bourreau apparently comes from the etymology of the word bourré, which means to torment. 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 That's Ooh. the word tourmenté. It's funny when you think how we use it now. <laughs> well, yes. Bourré. So bourré, oh, yes, because bourré <laughs> means to be drunk. <laughs> to be drunk. Yeah, in that's French that's, nowadays. Well, bourré, it's, it's that's like a slang for yeah. drunk. Yeah, yeah, drunk. Yeah, nowadays, though, yeah, yeah. Yeah. not bourré. at the time. <laughs> And uh, interestingly, um, uh, Louis the Sixteenth uh, bourreau was called Charles Henri Sanson. And what's very interesting about this is that uh, 
Being a bourreau back in a time was extremely prestigious, so they were very well looked after. And it was usually a job that was handed down from one generation to another. Oh, you know, okay. I'm not sure how they felt as a job. You know, <laughs> what do you do for a living? <laughs> I'm an executioner. You know, can you can you imagine? Uh, but uh, Charles-Henri Sanson uh, was a uh, very famous Uh, very famous. He's, he, he was the officiel executor uh, or bourreau um, back in uh, you know in the uh, 1790s, back in the French Revolution. And and fun fun facts or not fun facts? How many uh, how many heads do you think he chopped? Chopped today quite, in his career. Quite, in his career, a lot, I thousands, I should think. Uh, nearly three thousands. That is a good career. That that uh, yeah, it's it's all sad. Um, um, the saddest story is with his son, his young son that actually died in the job. So, which is a weird uh, fact. It's just that actually he fell down from the échafaud. L'échafaud is another name for la guillotine as well. And échafaudage is a scaffolding. Mm -hmm. Scaffolding. And so l'échafaud, aller à l'échafaud is another word as well to describe, you know, to, to go to the... Do you use that word for normal scaffolding? An échafaud? On, on a big yes, building échafaudage. Échafaudage, but échafaud is, is related to la guillotine uh, or any execution, you know, uh, yeah, it was platform. High. The, platform. It's a, it's a, platform. the platform. Anyway, so the poor boy uh, climbed up the échafaud uh, to to raise a head and, yeah. and fell down and, and unfortunately died. Um, such a sad uh, story. I mean, you know, it, sad and sad. His dad was going to kill someone anyway, so the whole thing was pretty tragic. And everything, <laughs> everything about it. You know, just talking about it makes me feel a bit queasy. Yeah. To stick with the queasiness, how do we say beheaded? Decapité. Decapité, oh, decapitate. Yeah. De decapitate. Decapitate. Yeah, decapitate. And that's the same. Yeah. Um, so in English, we have lots of words for you know cutting, chopping, uh, hacking, cleaving, uh, slicing. Do you have equivalent words in French? We have coupé. Coupé, which is to, which is to cut. Cutting. To cut. Yeah. Which I, and we have haché. 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 Which is to hack. To hack. hack. And, and interestingly enough, you use that in viande hachée, which in It's minced, minced meat. meat. Minced meat. So you, we use the word ash, ash, which is an axe, you know. So viande hachée is... Uh, so it's a hack, hack up meat. Chop yeah. meat, exactly. Minced up meat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, and to, and to chop. So the word to chop is hachée. No, no, uh, hack is hachée. Ha hack is hachée um, and to chop. Just coupé. Coupé it would be the right the same translation. Word to, to yeah. Cut. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. You've got fendre as well, but fendre Just is splitting something into splitting, like a cleave. I think, oh, right. Would so be fendre your and cleave. It yeah, to cleave be. is like a mm -hmm. yeah. splitting it into. Oh, interesting. And what about idioms? Do we have any of sort of relevant idioms in in French and English? You have, you know, we talk about uh, getting the chop or, or being axed when you you know when you lose your job. Something equivalent in French? Um, no, quite equivalent. We have couper la parole, which is interrupting someone. We also have couper la poire en deux, mm -hmm. which is compromising. To compromise, so couper yeah. la parole mm -hmm. is interrupting someone. Yeah, interrupting. How would we use that in a sentence? Arrête de me couper la parole. Stop interrupting me. Uh, are you saying that to me as a thing right not. now? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't dare. But <laughs> Par exemple, you would say, il me... Coupe la parole tout le temps. Il me coupe so, yeah. la parole Alors, tout yeah, le temps. Alors, you've got the me referring to me, you know, the direct object. So, il coupe à moi, il coupe, you know, par exemple, il coupe uh, à Bénédicte la parole. So, il lui coupe la parole. Okay, so, he interrupts mm -hmm. all the time. All the time. And the second one the that words. you said was couper la poire. En deux. Le en deux. Oh, en so, deux. to cut the... The pair mm -hmm. into yeah. couper la poire en deux. And Compromising. That means compromise. Yeah. Basically, let's say you want to go to a pub, I want to go to a restaurant, and then we decide to compromise. To compromise. And go to a pub, probably, because 
don't know. Go somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. that you, oh, okay. you agree with. So how you could say... On coupe uh, la poire en deux. On coupe la poire mm -hmm. en deux. Let's go to this Alors, place. Yeah, exactly. On coupe la poire en deux. On va d'abord au restaurant et ensuite au pub. Let's go to the restaurant and then, au then pub, to the pub. Ou vice versa, yeah. ou au cinéma, ou whatever. Oh, très intéressant. Um, in English, in, in, in English politics, actually, they use the term uh, guillotine or guil to, to be guillotined or a, a guillotine motion, I believe, to cut short a debate, to cut short a debate in, in, in Parliament if, if, they want, if they don't want people to talk about it for too long. So perhaps we should guillotine this episode. I yeah. think so too. Yeah, yeah. That, that reminds me, and we forgot to mention one last fact that Marie Antoinette did ask Le Bourreau to to something. And oh I don't yeah, think we mentioned um, it. it's because she was scared, um, because she heard her husband um, didn't die right away, so she was scared it it was it going to happen, happen to, to her. her. Yeah. So it is said that she gave a lot of money to um, uh, executioner to make sure that the blade was sharpened. Enough. And for so, the so to sharpen day. in French, it's aiguiser. 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 To, yeah. sharpen. to sharpen. Yeah. How do you spell aiguiser? Uh, A I G U I S E R. Aiguiser. 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 Yeah, on that lovely note. <laughs> 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 probably. Yeah. I mean, of course, as always, there is a support guide uh, with this podcast with all the words and expressions, idioms that uh, we have used uh, if you want to revise your guillotine uh, vocabulary. <laughs> and you can uh, email us too at podcast at learnfrench.com should you choose to do so. And I think that's it for us. Um, au revoir. A bientôt. <laughs> bisous, bisous. <laughs> Thank you.